chat. So in your opinion, Laura, COVID, in-person teaching, on virtual, all these other things, what is, um, just in general, the best part of our job as DAL profs, DAL instructors? Oh, the students. Students keep you young and, and thinking about things. And it's, it's fun to be a small part in people of that age. Like, and people always say about children, oh, it's such a fun age, right? Five-year-olds or eight-year-olds or whatever. 18 to 23 is a fun age, right? It's new adulthood where you're trying to figure out who you are and, and what you want to be. And to be able to assist with that or just witness it is really cool. What about the worst? The worst. Loop back to me on the worst. No, absolutely. Uh, Tammy. In Sorry, your... Tammy, if you're not ready for that question either. No, 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 no. I, I, am, I am asking the hard uh, questions. Uh, Tammy, what, in your opinion, is the best? The best for me, I mean, I echo what Laura said, absolutely. But the best for me is that without fail, there is not more than a couple weeks ever in my last, I don't know, 10, 15 years that goes by that I'm not hearing from some student about what they're doing now, thanking all of us for being a part of it. Or, I mean, recently on results day, uh, hearing from students who, oh, thank you so much to all the Dow profs that were part of this, you know, really appreciate it. Or even just, you know, I have former students who will say, hey, I'm going to be in town. Would you like to get together for a coffee? Or if I would go to teach in Toronto or something, students getting five or six of them together and we'd all go up for dinner. And I would just think I am so lucky to be part of this. You know, like that is just so awesome that I'm constantly getting this affirmation that I'm making a difference. And look, it's not all roses and sunshine every day is like that. I also have had some negative experiences of students who haven't all been as lovely with their comments, but that's fine too. You know, you can't win them all, but I feel like I'm making a difference. I feel like, what is that Pavlov's five hierarchies? I'm going way back now. I'm way, way, way back. But oh, there's, there's uh, Maslow. Maslow and yeah, that, that, yeah, the self-actualization is at right. the top. And I can remember uh, doing some jobs and feeling like, you know, this is just not doing it for me, but teaching is doing it for me. It was, it was what I was meant to do. I'm lucky. We're fortunate. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So for me, it's when I taught in the profession, um, I would get to know students over two days for a workshop or two months, and then all of a sudden they would leave. And sometimes I would see them again, but oftentimes I wouldn't because Calgary was a big uh, center. And so it was like getting, it was like reading a book and like, you're like, oh, this is a good book. And then somebody takes it away and then gives you a new book to read. And it <laughs> happens like that for like three or four years. And I'm like, okay, I am ready to like read a full book. I'm ready to like see the Harry Potter series through. And I would also see students um, at CPA that were at the beginning and they were like really strong university students. They knew their stuff, but they couldn't apply what they knew. Like they had the skill set couldn't apply what they knew, um, couldn't add value to the users, couldn't time manage, and um, then really had kind of a crisis of self. You know, I would see their self-efficacy -effic -effic um, impacted, which then would impact their performance because when they're self-guessing themselves, they're not, you're not gonna perform as well. So um, I, my whole thing was really, I wanted to make a difference by helping to bridge that gap. So it wasn't at university CPA or perceived, because we all know that it isn't necessarily, but perception and try yeah. to contribute to this. Um, and one of the things that I love about us at Dell is not only do we coordinate being fourth year profs amongst ourselves to make sure that we're not throwing in tax fine or tax midterm and audit midterm and an IFA <laughs> midterm all in the same like day or week. Like we, we talk, we communicate. Um, we often, you know, Laura and Tammy, you guys have done crossover cases. Tammy and I have done a few different crossover cases. Um, so we get to work together and integrate and support and doing so, we also bring in our CPA um, backgrounds and knowledge because we're all still very much tied into the profession in either you know, in one aspect or another, not going to blow anybody's confidentiality agreements here. Um, but we're able to 
take our skills and basis and weave them into undergrad to really work on that self-efficacy. So Tammy, to your point, when I hear from students, hey, I feel so confident. Hey, I feel like I have the skills. Hey, I see how what you taught us applies to now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes keeping that long-term perspective, you know, when they're like, why is this so hard? And I'm like, listen, it's going to be hard anyways, but at least the way that we're teaching it makes it so that you don't have to relearn it again in, in the new program. As 90% of our Dow grads tend to go on, accounting Dow grads go on to some sort of graduate or CPA level. So that's what I love is knowing that we are a part, a small part, or, you know, um, of, you know, helping uh, to, to shape that um, skill set. And for me, I'll just tell you, because uh, I know I put y'all on the spot I'm going to again about the worst part, but I would say that the worst part is that there is no, well, there are very, a lot of metrics to judge um, what performance is based, look like on us. There's no kind of blueprint. This is how you prof. Um, oftentimes <laughs> students don't know. Did you know that students came up to me and they're like, until you told us that you have to go to meetings, I just thought that all you did was prepare our classes and teach our classes. And I'm like, Whew, that is the best part. That is why I do this. And I'm like, but there's all these other things that I have to do in order to have the privilege to be here. So I started telling them about all the service commitments, about all the meetings, and that our job is really 60% teaching, um, which has felt, you know, at times during COVID slightly but, um, and then 20% to do with the profession and 20% meetings and, and um, service and other uh, committee requirements. And they were shocked. So for me, um, the hard, the, the worst, not the worst, yeah, the, the toughest part, the worst part of the job is that, you know, you're balancing all these things, you're, and that there's no blueprint to balance and that, you know, you're never quite certain, am I doing everything that I can be doing? Am I doing everything I should be doing? Am I doing, you know, where, like, what is like the end? What is the goal? And that, that uncertainty is something that um, I've definitely been more affirmed with saying, hey, I know that Laura and Tammy will let me know if I'm falling short. Um, <laughs> and on top of it, they'll also tell me when I'm doing a good job. And that's really nice to know. So Laura, am I, am I okay to circle back to you and ask you what the worst part of the job is or should I bug Tammy? I thought you'd forget, but apparently not. So <laughs> the, I hate to call this the worst because in some ways it's the best and Tammy highlighted how it's the best in the sense that we have a lot of flexibility. So if we have to take our child to the doctor in the afternoon or just wanna go for a walk in the afternoon, it's, it's quite possible to meet with students in the evening instead or on the weekend. Uh, and that's really nice. It's nice for family reasons and personal reasons, but it also, at least in my own experience, sometimes it results in me never being able to shut work off. And students have that expectation now, right? Where if an email is sent Saturday morning and they're used to me replying to emails Saturday morning, but I still haven't replied by Saturday night, then there's a follow-up email or I'm at the hockey rink trying to, you know, watch whenever my son comes on the ice, but I'm also like half the time my head's down marking tests. So sometimes I feel like it'd be nice to have a job like my sister who's a nurse and she is on for her shift and it's, it's definitely challenging, but when it's her days off, there is no, like, there's no nursing to be done or there isn't the guilt of, oh, I know I have a few emails. Should I, you know, not do this and reply to them now? Or, and, and some of that, I could do a better job of just setting boundaries, right? And saying, okay, any emails received on the weekend, I'll reply Monday morning. And I don't do that. But finding that kind of balance between how flexible to be or where to set aside personal time, I find a bit challenging. I can relate to that. Tammy, I'm going to uh, shuffle the hard question on to you. What's the worst part of our gig? Yeah, you know what? That's really true. And before I was a prof, I probably would have thought the same as what you said, students have said to you, Sam. I would have thought, oh, that's a really great gig. You know, like you go and teach your class and you're done and you get the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, no, and, and that's, <laughs> you know, that's what these and, and, you know, it is great that it's flexible and that wasn't going to be my answer to the question. Uh, I'll get to that in just one sec. But, but yes, I think that because sometimes people will see me out walking in my sweatpants or with my dogs or whatever, that they think that 
oh, well, you work part time. I get that all the time. I get that from my friends or family that like, you know, my mom will call. Well, you don't have to work today, right? And summer's <laughs> off. They assume oh, that you're free nothing all summer. Right, right. So there's that. But what I was going to say, I thought back to something. You know how when you're in high school, they always ask you for like your quote or something like that to put in the yearbook? So at 17, my quote was, what, what bothers you the most about people or something like that? And in my high school yearbook, it will say, I despise it when people lack ambition. At 17, I put that as my yearbook book <laughs> because I was that person. I've always been that person. Laura's laughing because she's known me for a lot of my life now. <laughs> and it's true. And honestly, that's what really does kind of get to me about students is I think all of us are all over trying to help students as much as we possibly can. But for me, one of the hard parts of the job is when a student isn't trying and then then they're looking for something at the end of the term. And that might tie into your last question too, Sam. I know you were going to ask some questions about advice to CPAs and all that. And it's just, you know, like put your best foot forward because now it's it's starting to count. You know, like it might not have counted when you were eight or nine. You could pull the I'm a kid. But, you know, like try your best or at least don't not try your best and then put it on somebody else that it somehow become their problem. We've talked a little bit about this end of term. We always see this with students and that's kind of what, that's probably what I spend time thinking about laying awake at night thinking, oh, you know, this person may not pass or may not do well, but then I stop and say, but whose fault is that? Right? So that's, that's what keeps me awake at night. Yeah, that is so relatable. Uh, sometimes uh, when I remember, I start my classes with saying, you know, hey, welcome. I'm pretty friendly and outgoing or, you know, that's what I like to think of myself. And then I say, you know, after the preamble, I'm like, okay. And, you know, just to let you know that nobody, like, I don't feel anybody here. Like, I don't feel anybody. And there I go. They get all excited because they hear like it's a hard course. And then I'm like, people fail themselves and mm. I hold them accountable for those failures. And then the mood, then it, it turns, shit turns real really quickly um, because that is part of it. We can joke, we can have fun, we can work hard. You know, some of my funnest memories are also where you're just like so tired that you're trying to get this like stuff done as, you know, props or as professional accountants. And, but you are with a team or you're with other people and you're getting through it. So um, it doesn't, just because it's hard doesn't mean it can't be fun, but just because we're having fun doesn't mean we also are working hard and taking it seriously. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's, it, and it does suck at the end of the term when you're sitting back and you're looking at these results and you're like, there's, you know, students have, in order for our degree to be worth something, to communicate something, to have the skill set for students, um, they need to meet those those measurable objectives. Um, and so I agree that that can, it can break your heart, right? I think we've said that offline that, um, you know, this can be one of those jobs where, you know, you can't really turn off caring. They, you know, students can't do have the ability to make you smile and break your heart. Yep. 